a lot of times people get hung up on what is critical. I keep it pretty simple, and again, in causation, we'll break that down, but it's, you know, avoiding damage or harm to persons or property, or breaking the law. That's kind of as clean and black and white as you can get with what a critical disengagement is versus a non-critical. Now, the robotaxi results, uh, I guess I'll start by mentioning I get some pushback on calling this robotaxi, but I'm going to make this as, as simple and blunt as possible for everybody to understand. The robot, aka the car on FSD, is doing the taxi trip. The fact that I'm in the seat or there as a just-in-case measure or a safety measure, it's, it's semantics. It's rather irrelevant. It's kind of a weak position to take that because I'm in the seat, it doesn't count as it doing a taxi trip. And it's as simple as can be from pickup to drop-off, I didn't have to intervene. If I do, it's a fail. It's, it's clean and cut. So if I had to disengage for whatever reason, it was going to miss a turn, it was putting us in a really uncomfortable situation, which we'll get into the causation stuff later as we look at the donut to show different reasons for disengaging. Or if it gets stuck and I had to give it throttle, I had to do something so the customer wouldn't be sitting there, it's a fail. This is a sample size of one. It's just me. However, it's just me having gone over a hundred thousand kilometers on fsd so there's been some argument that you know data from one youtuber doesn't matter uh that's just flat out false we're not in this to make things look good or bad we're here to show what is happening in the real world and present it to everybody in a way that is you know hopefully pretty easy to understand i know there's a lot of information on the screen and what's going on but uh, him and i alone do enough driving to run case studies on probably a hundred drivers so it's irresponsible, in my opinion, to cast aside or dismiss the data outright unless you have a certain narrative or bias you're going for that you just you don't want to hear anything about FSD doing well. Um, and in some cases, folks that are really hyperbolic in the other direction don't want to hear anything about it not doing well. We've, we've gotten heat from both sides. And I think uh, plenty of people have said if you're pissing off both sides, you're probably doing something right. And I'm hoping... I. I mentioned a few people on X that hopefully will come over that are on the more skeptical side with all this data collection so we can actually talk about it and build some confidence in the community around this data collection because to some people it's just viewed as a bunch of fanboys trying to make FSD look good but if you've been following Elias or I for a while between the community tracker and this Cyberlift dashboard it wouldn't take more than about 30 seconds to realize that we are not trying to make this look good. <laughs> Uh, we're just trying to show you the actual data and what's going on. Elias is currently busy in the background, but if questions come up where we need to bounce off of him, he's definitely more the expert on the data side. I'm more like a field scientist. Uh, so he's both. He's the field scientist and the data scientist. I'm the field scientist that goes out, tests the hell out of the system, records as accurately as possible, and then it pops up on this beautiful dashboard for us to actually compare all the software patches and if you can see it on here, hopefully it is uh, pretty visible for you guys. And we can click into the actual segments. Like, we'll go into the Robotaxi results here. If you look at the bottom, we're going all the way back to 10.8.1, version 10 days. And each of these bars is a build going forward up till now with 12.5.4.1 and all the dots in between. Um, I'm going to keep an eye up on chat. And Elias is in the chat too on YouTube, which is awesome. So, hey, hit him with the questions. <laughs> we're going to make him work tonight. Um, I think now we've got some, some traction and everything is looking good here. I'm going to go ahead and go through a baseline presentation of what this is, kind of like the traditional report videos. And, uh, then we'll, we'll get into questions afterward. And I don't know how long we'll run. This is the first time trying this in a live stream format, but I think this could be a really fun way to have audience interaction and, and break down this data more organically rather than just seeing it in like a 15, 20 minute video. So I'm going to back up to the main dashboards uh, front page, what you normally see. And again, uh, so real quick, um, I'll put it in the chat real fast for everybody. That way everybody can like poke around and look along with me. Like you don't have to just look at what I'm doing on my screen. You can actually go to that link and you can click on everything I'm clicking on. This is an open dashboard that everybody can look at. Uh, but different parts of it might seem a little confusing, so that's that's why we do our presentations. But on the front page here, you're looking at just an overall general view, and I have greater than 500 kilometers on the version selected just to cut out some of the noise. If we take this off, you'll notice up here on the Robotaxi results that there's some break in the data where, you know, while I was working with Arkimoto, I didn't get as much time on the road, so there are a couple little point releases like 11 
4.7.2 and 473 that I didn't really get any time on. I think I got, uh, what, two customer trips on 7.2 and one on 11.473, on <laughs> this dot language. Uh, the two trips on 7.2 were perfectly, uh, or went well, they were successes. So it's like the 100% marker you'll see on the RoboTaxi dashboard. But it's only two trips, guys. So that is one of the reasons we uh, came up with this sort of filter. Anything that I did more than 500 kilometers of travel on um, or about 300 miles. I'm also, uh, to make this fair to everybody, I'm going to try to remember to speak in both freedom units as well as metric. Yeah, it's just over 300 miles on each build is what this does. That way we can look at it. And let's check out Robotax report while we're on this. Again, I'm going to run through this and give a baseline presentation then we're going to go into questions and i appreciate everybody who's hopping in now the robo taxi results uh, i guess i'll start by mentioning i get some pushback on calling this robo taxi but i'm going to make this as, as simple and blunt as possible for everybody to understand the robot aka the car on fsd is doing the taxi trip the fact that i'm in the seat or there as a just in case measure or a safety measure, it's it's semantics, it's rather irrelevant. It's kind of a weak position to take that because I'm in the seat, it doesn't count as it doing a taxi trip. Now, what you can see on the screen is whether or not it does it successfully or not. And it's been interesting to watch the trend. Um, unfortunately, I wish I could tell you guys that the latest 12.5.4 one that I have, now Elias and some of these other Cybertruck owners, they're a step beyond me with 12.5.5. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, reports coming in earlier that the highway stuff is still a little shaky and there's still some problems, but we're not bouncing back up to the earlier version 12 success days. On 12.3, uh, the best being 12.3.3, we were at 88, 90% success, and it's as simple as can be. From pickup to drop off, I didn't have to intervene. If I do, it's a fail. It's, it's clean and cut. So if I had to disengage for whatever reason, it was gonna miss a turn, it was putting us in a really uncomfortable situation, which we'll get into the causation stuff later as we look at the donut to show different reasons for disengaging. Or if it gets stuck and I had to give it throttle, I had to do something so the customer wouldn't be sitting there, it's a fail. That's why it was so impressive that early version 12 was getting up back into the 90 percentile because before that, it was the kind of freaky unicorn build here on 11.42 at 93% that kind of teased us and then everything went to hell after that. But here on 12.541 with 31 trips in and we're at about 65%. Now, some of the things that are causing that are really simple issues. Um, mostly having to do with making a left into oncoming traffic, kind of like uh, intersections with stoplights, you know, where it's turning yellow and you have to turn. And um, there's also just roads where you're making that left and oncoming traffic is not impeded by stop signs or lights. And the car just kind of freaks out like right in the middle of the path planning and wants to veer off and i do have some footage of that so maybe after this and while we're going through questions and stuff we can look at a couple of examples but between that and uh the forced red wheel disengagements that happen either from the rain or from high beams as well as blatantly not wanting to stop at a stop sign which i've only had one instance of that today getting off of a highway where i had to take over because there was no indication that my car was going to slow down and stop these are things that obviously lead to failures and with improvements and future dot releases, I am fully confident that that little yellow bar is going to tick back up towards a hundred percent. But for now on 12541, we are struggling on our disengagements tabs. We're looking at all the disengagements across the builds and in blue, it's how far we're getting before a non-critical or non-safety, legal, or critical system fault-related disengagement, which it, uh, it's important to separate those and understand the difference because a lot of times people get hung up on what is critical. I keep it pretty simple, and again, in causation, we'll break that down, but it's you know avoiding damage or harm to persons or property or breaking the law. That's kind of as clean and black and white as you can get with what a critical disengagement is versus a non-critical. Um, and so in blue here, a lot of these builds getting pretty far, you know, 130 kilometers between non-critical disengagements on 12.3.6, which I had for a very long time. And I think a lot of you might still be on. Hopefully most of you have moved on to the 12.5 branch by now. Um, 130 kilometers, uh, if we break that back, that's about 80 or so uh, miles. Let me just do a little check here. Yeah, well, right, right on the money, about 80 miles. Heck yeah. So that's cool. I'm sort of... Uh, by unit. I can speak in both. 
And the yellow line, of course, here is showing the critical disengagements. <laughs> and I've, I've already joked with Elias that I've, uh, I've had more critical disengagements on this build than I think with any other build. And a lot of that's the red forced wheel disengagements that are happening with high beams. I don't know if you guys have noticed this too in hardware three cars that are on the 12.5 build at night or early in the morning, low light conditions when an oncoming car has their high beams on, it's just, it's forcing me to take over. Big red wheel, loud alarms. And uh, yesterday, or this, no, yeah, yesterday morning, that happened three times before sunrise. And then the night before that, three times on the way home, that's not good. So hopefully a future update can fix that. In our causation donut, if you're following along on this, again, teslafsdtracker.com forward slash cyberlip, forward slash cyberlip, sorry. Uh, you can click on all of this and you can filter out by versions and look at how the disengagements change. And you can compare different builds and look at them overall. Uh, with nothing select selected, you're looking at everything cumulatively. Um, if we look at just 12.5.4, it breaks down at the bottom here, human caused, legal, safety, which is basically a generic catch off for anything that's just unsafe, uh, skill issue, which is, it just does something poorly that you know it can do, it just doesn't execute it well enough, staging, which is not preparing for the next maneuver, say so you need to take an, an exit or get into the left lane to make a left lane change, and for some reason it decides to get into the right lane, and now you're going to miss that turn, it's a staging problem. System error is that red wheel disengagement that happens from losing traction, low or low setting or rising sun where you just get that photon overload, other random things that we don't really understand that are causing it. And now we know high beams for at least hardware three cars. I haven't seen any problems reported from Cybertruck or hardware four cars yet. Hopefully uh, this isn't an issue that lasts too long, but nine critical system errors in uh, the couple of days that I've been testing this. Um, Eight of them skill issue, which is sort of a generic didn't do it very well kind of thing, like making those uh, shooting the gap instances where it took too long and I had to take over because we we're going to end up sitting there in front of other cars or it uh, it just it missed its golden zone to take off and I had to give it throttle because uh, I do count. So with throttle interventions, if it's a courtesy, if it's just to move along and not annoy people, that does not to me count as a failure condition. It's when it's sitting there and thinks a light's red or won't move at a green light or won't move at an intersection and you have to intervene. That to me is a disengagement worthy or dis disengagement level intervention. I hope that makes sense. Well, let's see what we got. Orange is legal. One of those was stop sign. Um, actually, I think, oh no, the other legal one I just remembered <laughs> was turning into oncoming traffic. Uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't good. And I do have that on video too. So maybe we can take a peek at, at that instance as well. Um, there was nobody on the road in, in like coming toward us or at least they were probably, uh, five, 600 meters away or around, you know, four 500 yards away. So it wasn't a safety concern, but it was definitely one of those, Oh no, that's not cool. And had to get back into the right track. Uh, but these are separated by category in this way. And then on our map, this is kind of the fun thing that we started working on in California. So if we zoom out and go back over here to California, I mean, there's not going to be anything on 12.5, but if we go into, whoa, oh, I can just click on it. Yeah, that's right. He made it easy for me. You can see over here now with uh, 12.36 and how it performed in San Diego. Purple is actually really good. They were likely one-offs like right here with uh, Galavan was just one trip and it did it well. Costa Mesa, Dana Point. These are examples of the purple 100% success, uh, but it's more impressive when you see like here, <laughs> 12 trips in Claremont Mesa on 1236, 100% success rate. That is really good. That is an area where you can imagine like a future RoboTaxi program beta starting and like geofencing into that spot because they know it's really good while they train other regions to get up to that category. Uh, but zipping back over to Florida here, and I did do a lot of driving on 1236 before we got 1251. And uh, most of these regions, uh, well, there's two trips there, one trip there. These 100% realms are, are mostly one-offs. Uh, two trips there, two trips there through Sanford, St. Petersburg. Uh, Winter Haven, 26 trips, 54% success. But getting back to our current build on 12541, uh, you can see the current breakdown. Got some time in Tampa today. And I plan to hit a lot more of these areas to really color this map in a bit and show what's going on. I eventually would like to make my way down to Lauderdale, Miami, kind of travel all over the place. Uh, but the way we've broken it down is that at 100%, it's its own dedicated sort of purple color. Those are areas where there's been no failed trips. Uh, right now, Claremel City in Tampa has two successes. I don't think, oh, okay. And then the Tampa airport 
uh, routes to and from there had two successes today that were really good. And then if you, we don't have any teal or green yet. That's the 90 to 99% success realm. And then it's 70, 89, zero to 69. Basically red and orange, not great. Green and, and purple or bluish and purple, really good. So hopefully we'll see more purples and even some blues as I continue to drive around and flush this out. Now, granted what you're looking at with this Cyberlift dashboard here, this is a sample size of one. It's just me. However, it's just me having gone over 100,000 kilometers on FSD. So there's been some argument that, you know, data from one YouTuber doesn't matter. Uh, that's just flat out false. This is repeatable uh, testing and scenarios and not necessarily that the routes are repeatable, that the standards are across the board. And there's a level of integrity that I hold myself to and Elias and I am in, he checks me, we check each other, we verify things as best we can. We're not in this to make things look good or bad. We're here to show what is happening in the real world and present it to everybody in a way that is, you know, hopefully pretty easy to understand. I know there's a lot of information on the screen and what's going on, but, but him and I alone do enough driving to run case studies on probably a hundred drivers. So it's irresponsible, in my opinion, to cast aside or dismiss the data outright, unless you have a certain narrative or bias you're going for, that you just, you don't want to hear anything about FSD doing well. Um, and in some cases, folks that are really hyperbolic in the other direction don't want to hear anything about it not doing well. We've, we've gotten heat from both sides. And I think uh, plenty of people have said, if you're pissing off both sides, you're probably doing something right. I think that this is going to conclude it, guys. I know the wife ordered dinner, and it's just after 2100, and I think that was a really good hour. Um, anybody who has questions and didn't get to, leave them in the comments. Put them on X and YouTube. Give me all the feedback and suggestions. Elias and I will both be going through all this because we love this data side. We're the data bros, and we want to make this more mainstream for everybody because it's cool to see what the car is doing. But I think it's even cooler to actually know what's happening and how things are changing over time. Um, I'll let you guys know we're getting closer and closer to 2,000 actual tested trips with customers. Closing in on 2,000 hours probably this year on FSD. And uh, I'm personally going to try to get, you know, double my distance on here. And I know that on the big tracker, we're getting close to some really big milestones really quick with everybody who's contributed. So uh, that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this first RoboTaxi live stream. Hit me with all the feedback. I love it because it'll help me do this better, more efficiently, and uh, maybe more fun in the future. And you all have a wonderful evening. And um, if you're in Florida, stay safe. We have another hurricane on the way, Hurricane Milton, currently tropical storm. It is heading straight for Tampa. Yeah, so stay safe, guys. It's going to be a wet, rainy one this weekend and into next week. Um, thank you, Sean. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tessa Bull, Martha, all of you, Polar, and Elias, of course, everybody for tuning in and I will catch y'all in the next one.